Hi everybody, welcome to Beyond the Lines. My name is Sarah, I'm the artist by Pencil Geschichten and today I'm gonna work in the Outlander coloring book. I'm going to work with watercolor pencils and I'm going to start the underpainting for this particular piece here called Whiskey Storage. That's what I'm gonna call it. So uh, enjoy. All right, here we go. So I had decided to go with watercolor pencils and colored pencils for this particular page here, as I showed you in the intro. Um, I very quickly will, will enter, because I, usually I show the things that I'm gonna use, the materials I'm gonna show them on camera here before I use them, like when I do the Neo colors or the Inktense pencils or colored pencils or whatever. But um, my watercolor pencil set is way too big, so I'm going to enter footage from this camera here, because I'm quickly gonna put it on and I'm going to quickly film my uh, watercolor set. So these are the watercolor Albrecht Dürer watercolor uh, pencils by Faber Castell, all of the colors, and um, they come in these two rows here. And this is what I'm going to work with for the underpainting. And behind that box, later on, I will use the Polychromos, which are the colored pencils by Faber Castell. And they are exactly the same colors as the watercolor pencils are. So I can uh, definitely work very well on shading and stuff. So let me take away this camera again. Okay, now we're gonna get back to this one here. So, uh, you just saw uh, what the desk next to me looks like. This is the piece and as per usual, when it's time to color in the Outlander book, I'm gonna read you quickly the text that comes with this particular picture here and it says, Better have a wee nip, he whispered to me. I, it will not fill your belly, but it will make you forget you're hungry. So uh, this is on the ride to Castle Liach. We are still very early in the story here. Uh, I'm going to take the pages that I already colored in this book. I'm going to put them to the side. I color chronologically in this particular book. If you uh, are new to the channel or the show and haven't seen anything about it yet. And every page I work with different media and there's a lot of pages left in this particular book. Sometimes I work with what's given in the books. So I do have the first Outlander book next to me and also the companion guide. Um, just to look things up like family crests or whatever. And sometimes I work with the show, uh, the color scheme that comes with the show. For this particular page here, there's no reference in either of my, um, of my uh, references. So the book doesn't say anything about it, nor does the show. So I'm very free to work here as I like. And what I want to focus on today is... Uh, light and shadow. So I uh, showed you in an earlier episode how I work with reflection. Um, it's actually also in this book so you have to look for, I think it's called the Fraser Tartan. It is uh, this particular page here where I also worked with uh, the watercolor pencils and the um, colored pencils and I worked on showing you how I have or how I color reflection on metal. And today I want to show you how I work with glass. Um, the one thing that I have to think about before I even start thinking about what colors do I want to use is where does my light come from? This is very important when you work with glass and or reflections. Now on the tartan page there was a candle so I knew where the light source was uh, coming, where the light was coming from. But in this particular page here there is none. There is no a candle, there's no light, no flashlight, no nothing. So I have to decide where I want my light source to be and then color accordingly. Now I think it would be best because 
all of the bottles and glasses are down here to have the light come from the lower right hand side and go into the room so back here all is dark and down here there's the light so it's pretty much like a door is open to this room and the light comes in pretty much um, there is a lot of work uh, on, a, there's a lot of wood here, a bit of metal and glass. There is no other material other than these three. I could have some of the bottles here be stone or terracotta or clay or something. Like for example, this one would be one of those, uh, same here maybe. Um, I could do that and not have them reflect, but here you can see on the line work, this is crystal. Uh, crystal glass so of course I'm gonna have reflections there a lot these back here are way smoother the light doesn't uh, break in there is no prism thing going on but uh, still there's light uh, coming towards it so now that I know my light source the next thought is uh, what colors do I want to use um, what uh, tone do I want to use? Do I want warm colors, cold colors to be dominant? Do I want uh, a certain feel maybe to the page? And I want to keep this quite authentic to the time frame that we're working with. So this is the 18th century. Um, there's not going to be, excuse uh, <laughs> my, well, very bold statement here, but there's not going to be any Smirnoff funny uh, um, these uh, milky glass bottles that we get nowadays. So this is going to be very simple glass, crystal and glass and terracotta and wood and metal. So I want it to be true to the age. Um, that means that certain colors are maybe a bit more likely to be used. For example, the barrels, of course, they will get uh, lovely shades of brown here. And the further I go back, the darker they're going to be. The metal, the rings are going to have the cold gray and maybe a tiny little blue, bit of a blue tint to it. And then I can choose... Um, what the bottles uh, will look like. The floor is going to be the most interesting thing. So uh, there the, the light comes through the glass bottles. So it gets whatever that bottle is. If it is purple, there's got to be a little bit of purple on the floor back here. Now, this is a page that will probably take a very long time to color so i'm very sure that i'm not going to be able to do this in the two hours that i allot for every uh, beyond the lines video so get ready for multiple parts and um i want to show you well, how I like to work with these scenes and how long it actually takes to do something like that and to be patient and just to work on layers and layers and layers to get to the result that you want for your artwork, for your coloring book, for whatever it is that you want to apply this um, principle maybe or take something from this uh, demo here to, well... Uh, use on your own artwork. Now I'm going to take a sip of tea and then I'm going to decide which brown I'm going to take for the barrel or brown z, plural. It's hardly ever just one color. Sip of tea, check. And now, um, so let's see. Um, the bottles here will be mostly green and uh, clear color, I think, maybe one a little purple, a little something, but mostly green and clear color, so I can have a little bit of a lighter floor, maybe something like this as the, uh, as the main tone, or something like this too, that's also a very nice color. Uh, the barrels and also this chest here, they have to be separate from that. And I also want the chest to be a different color than the barrels. Um, 
So let's go for a cold tone, cold brown tone for the barrels that I can then um, darken up very well for the background here. So the cold tones are here, the 176, which would be Van Dyke, if I read it correctly. Is it Van Dyke? Yes, it's a Van Dyke. Uh, this is a little bit too light for my personal taste. That is Nougat. Uh, this one here, the Burnt Umber, that would be a nice cold tone. And the 177 is the Walnut. And then we do have this one here, this is a Sepia. And this is a uh, brownish black. So this is going to be a shading color. That one will go with me right away. And um, I think I want the 280 which is the burned umber. By the way, you don't have to write down the number of the pencils here and everything. I'm going to have it on my blog. The blog will be published the day this um, the last part of this video comes out. So if you want to color along, you'd have to, and you want to use the exact same uh, supplies that I'm using here, you'd have to uh, write it down. But if you just uh, want to color something similar or something for this particular page later once you see all the parts that come out um, you don't have to write anything down it's all going to be on the blog the description box below holds the link to my web page so you will be um, good to go there just uh, look for whiskey storage this is what i'm gonna name this page and the video and everything. This is going to be whiskey storage. Just look it up on the website and you can find all the materials that I'm going to use. Um, so I do have the two brown, uh, the sepia and the dark brown. Um, I need a bit of a lighter tone. Uh, I might go a little bit into, do I want to go a little bit into the yellow? Uh, not really though. Um, I don't want the nougat. I don't want this. I don't want that. That's warm. All the others are quite the warm colors too. So, well, let's uh, have just a smidge of the 179 in there, which is... Easter. Okay. That's a fantastic name for a watercolor pencil. Um, so I'm going to use three, these three tones to color the wood on uh, the front barrels. The ones that are back here, the wooden part, will have also a little bit of um, deep indigo because the blue tone with the brown or the gray makes it even darker and it's a wonderful shading color other than the Van Dyke brown. This is one of my favorites. Um, I'm not gonna, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not gonna look up the uh, colors for the um, metal for now. I'm just taking care of the wooden parts and Back here, this is really going to be very dark, so I'm going to bring in black, of course. And now it is time to color. So I'm going to start with my main tone. That is the Burnt Umber. I'm having a cardstock behind it not to have any indentations or anything go through to the next page. Um, if I work with uh, acrylics or wet things, I take out the um, the page right away, even before I start, uh, just to protect the rest of the book. And since I want to mount all of these um, pages here on black cardstock anyway, once I'm done with the book, uh, eventually this will also, of course, be taken out of the book. Um, it uh, uh, it will loosen a little bit easier on the seam here. The the glue will loosen up a little bit easier when I wet 
the colored pen, uh, the, the watercolor pencil here. So that's why I'm coloring in the book. Also, I have a cushion behind this page, which makes coloring a little bit easier there. So that is why I work like that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, take one of these barrels here and give it a solid coat of the burnt umber. And then I'm going in with the sepia, which is the darker tone. And I'm going to work with the line work that comes with the book to put my shadows. Now I also will put in my uh, shading myself. First I'm going to work with the one that comes with the book and then with my own. So I have to remember all the time now where I said my light would come from. And I will have to color all of these pieces accordingly. So I also intensify the lines here um, that uh, indicate that there are certain loose pieces that were put together to make this barrel. So the wooden planks but pretty much want to have that there. Now for this particular barrel there's one in front so there's going to be shadow uh, down here because the light from that open door the imaginative uh, the imagined open door won't hit it. Uh, there's also going to be some shading here. And of course also here. And the same goes for the lid. It's actually quite the dark one. Um, I just saw this is also wood. The metal is only on the outside of the barrels, so I have to color this part here. And also shade it accordingly. Okay. Now I uh, have to think, do uh, the, the, these are the ones that get some kind of light. This is not really getting any light, so it doesn't get the um, yellowish light tone. So it just gets the burnt umber and the uh, sepia dark. And that is the wood of my first barrel. Um, I will also bring in a little bit of the um, indigo, just a bit. And do I want to go barrel by barrel? Yeah, why not? So um, for this one here, I also need the metal parts, right? So I want cold gray because metal has a cold gray tint. So I want the paints gray for shading because it is a bluish gray, this one here. And I find it one of the best colors to shade uh, any metal parts. So I want this one. Uh, I want a smidge of a of a light blue, and that would be a cold one as well. So I'm go. I would have to choose between the two. This is a little too warm. Uh, these two would be the trick, and I would take the 146. 146. Where are you? That's uh, sky blue.
Uh, I do have the 157, the Indigo here. Now I need a lighter gray. Uh, since I will work with polychromos on top, um, I could go actually kind of light, which means the 233 would maybe be nice. It's a mid gray, cold gray. It's a cold gray four to sharpen that. I only sharpen my pencils when I use them. I don't sharpen them to be sharpened in the box, by the way. So uh, I would now go for the gray tone first. And very solid here. Same on this one. Then go in with a paints gray to shade. And that is darker here. In this part of the barrel there's shading because that one that barrel here shades the metal of the uh, other barrel. Same on this one here. And also here. Now I go in with the light blue. Very light touch. Add a bit of that blue. To give it that tint and then I go in with the dark indigo and go over the dark parts here just to give it a bit more of a richer uh, gray tone there uh, now I need my water brush um, Yeah, I still have enough water in the barrel so I can go in and liquefy what I painted there. And I'm going from light to dark first on this metal here. You see I, d I have a smidge of uh, paper there that is uncolored and I can pull color into it if it is wet. So I'm wetting that part first and then I pull pigment towards that section. So again, water it here and then the rest and pull it to the right. Didn't have a white spot here, so I can just liquefy my colored, uh, my watercolor pencil here. Put some water to it. Now I'm starting at the top again at the light section of the barrel, light brown first. I can always pull the dark brown towards the light brown. So. If I have too much uh, paint on my brush, I can just dab it on my paper towel. Now I go section by section, meaning I stop at the lines here at the barrel and that will intensify or make that uh, line between the planks actually visible or keep it visible if I put down that dark color sometimes it could be that you don't uh, you can't see 
stuff anymore once you uh, put down your ink or your color pencil, whatever it is. But by having the brush stroke end at this line, I can see it later on uh, without any problems still. So now I can go in here. And get this pigment liquefied. Bit of shading underneath that uh, metal ring. Again, light tone first, and then I go into the dark tone and pull it to where I need it to go. There we go. Barrel number one is colored, at least the under uh, painting. I can have a lot more detail with colored pencil on top if I like. But the further I go into the background, the less detail I want um, on these uh, barrels. Because the farther something is away, the less detail you can see. All right, on to the next barrel. Um, I'm gonna take this one here in the back, going in with my brown again. And one thing that I always urge you to remember, something that is very important, is to have your hand lay comfortable when you work, because uh, you are very likely to have cramps or um, carpal tunnel syndrome in the end if you don't make sure that things are very comfortable and smooth for you when you sit at your desk for a long, long time to work. Um, less cramping when you have a good uh, work situation there. I'm going on on top with my sepia and this is way further in the back this barrel here so it has to be way darker which is why I'm giving this a uh, very soft complete uh, layer of this sepia tone and then I'm going in for some darker parts on the parts that I would have shaded nonetheless, so something like this. And I do have the shadow here underneath that metal thing. Actually, this is all just very dark. And I'm going to bring in my dark indigo. Go over this very dark bit here. So back here. Coming back with the sepia and pulling it a little higher up here. And now I go in with black. And darken things even a bit more. don't want to lose the umber though so I'm going in with another layer of the umber okay. uh, the metal ring is the next thing to be colored Going in with my lighter gray. Pretty much solid layer. There's not any light 
back there so I can skip the light blue too. Uh, going in with Payne's Gray. Adding a lot of that. I'm keeping a little bit of just the light gray here in the center and then I can go in with my uh, deep indigo to add a bit of that blue touch that makes everything just a little bit richer. A little bit of black down here. All right, now I can put water to this particular barrel. I'm starting with the metal again. Putting water to the light section first and then pulling the darker color into the lighter. With these tiny little smidgy things here, I don't bother. I just go over everything all at once. And then can go back here. And Add a lot of dark to this particular barrel here. Going in on the other side. Picking up a bit of the dark and putting it over that seam between the planks. And adding a little more there. So this barrel here moves way into the background just because I colored it that dark and there's no little light spot like this one has here. Uh, there's gaps between the um, the barrels and I want to have them just a solid black because even back there even further away there's not gonna be any light so I'm just going to uh, have these two bits here colored black sorry for the background noise there's a certain mailman who's uh, coming with a Vespa that has seen better days, especially when it's in neutral. But anyway, uh, there's the very dark background there that also helps to pull these uh, barrels backwards. Another thing that um, I find quite important when it comes to uh, working on whatever it is that you're working on is that you work with your handedness. So I'm left-handed, meaning I work from the right to the left so that I don't smudge anything. And there he leaves. Bye, mailman. Have a great day. Um, so in order not to smudge anything, I work 
from right to left and from top to bottom. So uh, that is something that I find helps me a lot not to have anything smudge, especially when I work with watercolors or ink or also Copic markers where or alcohol markers anyway that stay maybe a little wet for a while. I tend to not uh, smudge <laughs> them as much and drag anything with me across the page if I uh, work with my handedness. And that, again, like I said, is right to left and top to bottom for me. If you're a right-handed person, um, it's probably uh, top to bottom, left to right. For you is a bit uh, better to work smudge free and another thing is um, it uh, might help you not getting overwhelmed with colors if you or intricate pages if you work uh, from a certain direction instead of oh there's a red here and there's a green here and ah uh, all the things you know when you work for example say you're working in a coloring book and uh, you watch this videos to maybe get an idea for a cool color scheme that you want or what you happen to have those watercolor pencils here and you want to work with them and want to see what is a great combo maybe or a combo that you like um there's uh, color pay or color books like uh, the kirby rosans um the mythomorphia imagimorphia anamorphia those books they're very intricate and there's a lot going on on these pages so by working with your handedness and one bit at a time it might make it less daunting for you to work on such double spreads for example that are really intricate and uh, you might lose yourself and then have the page be too busy looking for your taste because you're uh, having I don't know color going everywhere across a page so I just went with the burnt umber um, lowest, so base coated, then went with a sepia on top, medium pressure here, light pressure here, and then had a few details going in with the, or a few sections only colored with the um, dark indigo. And now I bring in a bit of black. Just to add even more darkness, also here underneath that metal belt. And then I can go in with my gray base coated and then have some shading. I'm not going to take care of these uh, bolts here for now. That is something that I want to maybe add with uh, either a gel pen or a colored pencil later. So I'm just gonna disregard them for now, at least for the parts here that are so way back. I, I might add shading here on these, but that's something I will think about when I am at that spot. Bringing in the dark these bands here also a little bit of indigo again just to not have it look too flat you know it, I find it really helps can also put it underneath a black to not have the black look flat like uh, here this black looks very flat but I want it to be because it is the ultimate background there uh, but I'm going to bring in a bit of black on these sides here all right uh, maybe hmm, need a bit more of the Payne's gray with a very light touch because I think it's just a little bit too light there now again water and you see I uh, also tilt my book when I work um, I find this is very helpful 
to uh, again have a comfortable way of working for both my back and my arm because quickly all right uh, because well I uh, I will sit here for a couple of hours recording these videos um, and uh, I try to make it as comfortable for me as possible so I don't bump into this corner all the time and still I don't have to color way up here I can uh, have my hand very comfortable laying on the paper and still not have um, the uh, bended corners in the end because I'm bumping into things otherwise. Okay. I just uh, liquefied that little rim here where I did hardly any shading just to have a smidge of a highlight and well, not a highlight really, but uh, some color distinction here before I go into the super darks down here. And also here. Nice and dark. And bring in the dark from this part of the barrel too. And then I can color this wooden plank here underneath. Have the dark underneath the metal rim. And there we go. Barrel number three. Time for another sip of tea. Now, there's another barrel down here, or behind. there's two of them behind these uh, bottles. I'm going to color them together. I'm not going to split things up in between, so just have to make sure that I put my colors on the right spot. So there are the browns. Bottle, bottle, bottle. This is brown down here. This is two. Then there's metal. And then there's brown. Oh, it's actually that other barrel. All of that is brown. Uh, this is brown. And. This is all brown and then there's metal. Yeah, um, <laughs> you really have to uh, have eagle eyes sometimes to make sure that you put the color down correctly on these tiny bits. So I'm going in with the sepia. And this barrel here is on this layer uh, or this... Um, depth pretty much so uh, the one behind will be the darker one so here and here and uh, this one here that i'm currently working on is gonna have some lighter spots so i'm going to go back in with my burnt umber and then with my indigo and I'm just putting the indigo on top of the darkest areas that are on this barrel a little bit of black And then I can color, color the metal parts, which is here and here and here. And also there. And 
Again, I'm going to add the um, the paint scrape pretty much solid on top. There's not a lot of reflection here. Maybe uh, even a bit of a stronger um, indigo tone to right here where there's really a dark part and right here where there's two. And then going in with my water brush again. These sections here that I can hardly uh, pull pigment anywhere, I just can go over them solid like the uh, back barrel. I don't really need any light or detail there. So now for the front barrel, I will liquefy the light first and then pull the dark to where I need it to be. And on this rim here, there's light. And then I can go in for the metal, so over here. And also over here, going light to dark again. There we go. Moving on to the left, so I have to put my cardstock spot on into the ditch to uh, um, save or to protect my page also on this um, binding here. So back here there is another very dark barrel. So I'm going to use the burnt umber as the underpainting again. Uh, there's that's a funny line there. Um, this is the metal. What is this line? Hmm. Just going to color the both of them brown. I think this line there was not really supposed to be there. Uh, going on with sepia on top. Pretty much solid layer, but having more pressure here where there are the darks. Bringing in the indigo again, again going over the darks. Same here. And then just a smidge of black over here, down here, here and on the bottom here. Since this is so way back in the background, I definitely can have quite a bit of the dark color there. Base coating with the light gray, going in with my Payne's gray. And then indigo. 
towards the edge here, there, and a little bit more of the black here. And then I can go in with my water again. So this is, uh, once you have your colors down, once you know where your light comes from, what colors you want to have, and you have pretty much the same thing to color over and over again, like me with these barrels here. It is fairly simple to figure out where you put what color um, on, a, on a single barrel. It's really simple. You just need to figure it out once and then just follow through and just execute on putting your pencil down and going over it with the brush. That's this part here and then that barrel. See, the dark is done. Now I can move on to these three barrels. They will be colored like this one again. So a little bit of light. Oh, I have to move into frame. A little bit, like this one here, a little bit of light, but mostly dark. And uh, here we're going to hit the first light. And this particular pencil will come in as well. The light blue again. Um, for the darks, there's no need to put down the light blue. Okay. I have to sharpen my pencil once more. Ooh. Oh no. I have to, I think my uh, pencil sharpness full, so I quickly have to empty it. Because whenever my tips break off when I sharpen them, it's a good sign that my sharpener is full. go again. Let's quickly sharpen you. There we go. So I will color these three uh, barrels all in one go. Going with the uh, umber first. Putting down the umber up here on the barrel. Next barrel. Well, these seem to be barrels with uh, different amount of um, uh, rings here, okay. So, to remember that. So I think this was another ring, but well, it's so way back in the dark that I totally get away with having this just a dark brown black tone. So these are the barrels with the umber. Now I'm bringing in the sepia. Shading.
Put some here on the sides, not only the top. Sepia here as well. And then bringing in the indigo. Also here. And on this barrel too. And just a smidge of black. And of course, the same as I did before for the metal. I'm still not gonna use the um, light blue. Or am I? Hmm, maybe a little bit. No, no, actually, no. It's gonna be on these three. There's gonna be the light blue coming back. But for these uh, barrels here, I think I'm totally fine with just using a little bit of the um, uh, the Payne's Gray. And a little bit of indigo. And because I can, I'm also going to add a little bit of black. Especially here on these shadowy bits. All right, time for the water to come in. First on the brown here. And down here. Then there's time for the metal bits on this barrel furthest to the back. And then I can have the one here in front, again having the light brown uh, pigment going down first. And then having the dark and 
pulling the dark a bit over these seam lines here. Moving on to the metal bits here. Want this really dark. There we go. Have the light and bring it into the dark. And now wooden piece number one, number two, and number three. And then I can move forward with the other metal rings here. And finally, the last barrel. and the metal parts. There we go. That looks like something, I hope. <laughs> Um, all right, so this this tiny little bit already took pretty much an hour. Mm. I'm gonna work uh, on these barrels here, these three, and then I think uh, it's enough for this particular video and I'm gonna get a new tea and then start filming the next video. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to stop it there then. Uh, now, for th these here, these barrels here have a bit of light. So I'm going to bring in, like I said, these two pencils. But I'm going to start off, like I did before, with my umber on this barrel here. Being careful. I will color the uh, bottles here in the next video because uh, I have to spend some time thinking about what colors I want for those. Um, so I'm uh, that needs a bit of time and I think um, it's best to use the video today to work on these wooden barrels. So I'm bringing in the umber here, just the base coat again. Also here. So on these barrels here you can see there's way more line work, little uh, scratchings and stuff there uh, like um, you can see the uh, the lines that are in the barrel uh, in the wood um, so I'm going to uh, intensify these of course but first base layer so there we go. 
Now I'm going to bring in the light and uh, have to decide where the light hits it. So the light comes from the lower right hand side, like I had said. So it's going to pretty much hit around my hand here. So there's going to be light here, also here. And I'm going to keep my hand here for now, here. And here. And a bit here. Same up here. 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 Here and here. And just a little bit because it's curving, that barrel is curving. So it's just on the lower part, a bit on these sections here. No light down here because that barrel, oh, maybe. Hmm. Hold on, so there was my, it has a little bit here because I wanted this to be lit up. All right. Uh, so these were the yellow lights, right? Now I can go in again with the sepia and add a bit of shading. Not as much as I did with the barrels before, just a bit. Because again, this is way more in the background, uh, in the foreground, so of course it's not going to be as dark as the others are here. So you will see way more uh, umber there. But since barrels are round, you will have shading on the parts that uh, are not hit by the light. What I'm also going to do is I'm trying not to go to dark here because I don't want to lose sight of these lines that are in here so that I can uh, add them later with my colored pencil. So there's going to be dark underneath this um, metal ring. Same here. You, re you see I don't close the gap uh, there so I'm just going like two thirds in and a little bit of this um, ring is not going to have any sepia underneath and uh, that is because the light hits it here dead on so you won't see any any shadow underneath that but I'm going to bring in a little bit of my deep indigo here just on the edge and here where there's the other barrel in front of it and a little bit here all right and now I bring in my light gray Just for a light coat. And all of these rings. And now I bring in the light blue uh, where the light hits this barrel. So that is here in the front. And 
can. Maybe it hits it a little bit up here. Two. And then I bring in the paint spray. I go in from the outside towards the inner bits here. But I'm not going to be as strong with my pigment as I was in the background. Just need a little bit of dark to help the curvature of uh, the barrel look exactly like that. I mean, like a curved barrel. And here I'm going to have shading, of course. And that means I also bring in my uh, indigo. Now before I liquefy all this pigment here. I want to add a little more of my burnt umber. Uh, maybe the sepia. Mm, sepia is down here because behind this barrel there's also going to be some shadow. Maybe a bit more up here. All right, now it's time for some water. And I'm going to start with the wood up here on top. Also that part here. And closing that ring from the other side and then I can have shadow pulled up. Starting in the middle where I laid down that uh, lighter pencil and then I'm pulling pigment in from the outside. The uh, the lines here um, on the woods are very well visible still, so I can work on that detail later with my colored pencils. And just pretty much base coat these uh, foreground um, barrels here. I'm not going to put any pencil to the background barrels, I don't think. So uh, yeah, now for the bigger part here, uh, I do have the line work going horizontal instead of vertical, so let me quickly just uh, smudge this and then I will go plank by plank and for these big pieces here, for these big wooden pieces I will keep my brush strokes uh, vertical instead of horizontal and just color wooden plank by wooden plank it will help in the end with the texture 
for bits that are in the background or that are super tiny, I pretty much don't care. I just color it the way it's most comfortable for my hand. But for these big parts here, I have to make sure that uh, my brush strokes go into the correct direction to not have things look weird in the end. So... And one more. Then I don't uh, really care if I have some lines here being there in the end. Uh, it actually helps with the texture of the wood, so I don't have to have this part... Um, super smooth. I don't have to uh, blend out my brush strokes to the nth degree. I just can keep it like that and make it a uh, wooden texture. It actually really helps. A little bit here. And now I have to refill my uh, brush and then I'm gonna... Okie dokie, got a new freshly refilled barrel um, of my brush, I mean. Now I can go on to this uh, barrel here. This is in the shadow of this particular barrel on the right hand side but still a bit of light hits it. So uh, I'm going to start with the umber uh, pencil again and then bringing in that light pencil once more and also the light blue. So with my hand, I'm going to show you again. So this is where the light comes in. So it uh, in the long run, this one here shades that one. But there is some light that hits here. All right, uh, and a little bit of smidge hits here, just a bit. Uh, maybe just a little bit to this side. Okay, now the sepia comes in, the dark tone, and that is here where the dark, uh, the, the shadow from uh, this barrel to the right is happening. Same here where there's a shadow because it, the barrel is curved. Um, And on the lid, 
there's also a shadow because the light is on the lower angle there. Adding a little more of this uh, umber here on the front. And then I go in with the indigo on this edge here and also this edge. Then I go in with the light grey. And then put the light blue on top where the light hits. So the light hits here. So there's blue, blue and blue. Uh, there is no light particularly hitting down here, so I'm just adding a, a smidge. Then going in with a Payne's Gray again. Is that the right one? Yeah, Payne's Gray. And bringing in the dark from the edges. Because again, this helps with the barrel looking curved when you... Um, bring or if your values are different in the center than they are on the edges. Uh, time for indigo. And since this barrel is behind that one, I'm oh, I forgot one. Ah, -da, here. Down here there's also metal. So this one with Payne's Grey and Indigo. Uh, since this barrel here is behind that barrel, I'm also going to bring in the black. And I'm going to have the shadow here. And here, something like this. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to fit in the third barrel to move quite quickly. So I'm starting with the metal this time round. Because for the barrel I have to have the vertical lines again instead of horizontal like I do here. With that freshly filled water brush of mine uh, there's quite a bit of water coming so I have to move across the paper quite fast. Oh, I forgot to paint the metal here. So let's do that before I move on to the wood on this uh, barrel here. Quickly. Um, I have to move a bit faster, otherwise I'm leaking water with a fully filled barrel of this water brush. So let's pull in the dark into the light. And I will most definitely go over the uh, front and center barrels here with my color pencil later and add a bit more detail and depth but um, I still color these barrels here in the way that um, I could have a cohesive uh, page here without adding the um, the colored pencil so I'm not coloring less just because I'm putting 
or I'm planning to put color pencil on this particular part in the foreground, but uh, I'm coloring it just as intensely as I do with the background. But I'm going to add even more to the uh, barrels in the front. So now I can go onto the wood of this barrel. Starting with the um, umber again and then pulling in the shadow. There we go. Um, since it is one of the wood barrels in the front, again, I'm going to paint section by section and uh, for these long bits here keep my brush strokes vertical instead of horizontal. The shading underneath the metal ring actually works better if I go um, horizontal, but uh, I still have to make sure that the bigger sections look better, not the smaller ones. So I am keeping my brush strokes vertical so the line here would look better if it is um, horizontally colored or liquefied. Oh well, I can maybe add a bit of a nicer shadow underneath those rings later. There we go. Now here I can go horizontal again, that's fine. And there we go. Second barrel is done. And now I'm quickly gonna color the third and then I'm gonna finish this part of the coloring. I'm gonna color the rest or the next part I'm gonna color next week then. But first going in with the umber again making sure that my cardstock is all the way to the left going in here here and also here. All right, now I have to figure out where the light hits. So again, uh, this is the light source. So uh, the, the light direction, I should say. So it pretty much hits up here, up here. Up here. And uh, with the sepia, I can bring in the shadow, which is down here. And here. Same here. On the lid, of course. Go 
going in with the umber once more to just intensify it a bit not to have it look too pale in comparison to the other brown tones and a bit of indigo up here underneath these rings and a bit of black here I'm first gonna color the metal rings again I'm going to put on top a bit of black on the outside of the barrel but that goes on top both the wood and the uh, metal so I want to have that colored first of course that is the Payne's gray gonna bring that in from the side and oh forgot this one down here just a smidge of the light blue doesn't hit uh, there not a lot of light hits here as it hits on this barrel here for example a uh, bit of indigo here here and on these parts of the barrel too same here now I can bring in the black and I can go solid over this edge and also here and I'm going to bring in a bit of black down here and a little bit more sepia behind this barrel here all right, now I'm going to uh, liquefy this, starting with the metal again. Now really go to the edge with my brush. make sure that everything is colored really well here in the in the ditch so that I have nice pigmentation there when I tear out this paper out of the book later it's dark There we go, then metal down here. Now I can work on the wood. This shadow coming in from the left hand side of this barrel, so the indigo there plays really well into that as does the black up here And 
and this section here I have to have the vertical lines again because this is big enough to be visible when I have horizontal lines there but the shadow I will bring in horizontally to turn my book otherwise I can't get into the nooks and crannies or the ditch there on this part and now comes for the bigger sections here Watercolor, by the way, does fade back quite a bit once you have it dry. You can see here this looks kind of uh, flat in comparison to where I have the wet paper. But either uh, you, you could remedy that flat look by either having another layer there of uh, watercolor pigment or by going on top with color pencils both is absolutely working well depends on what you prefer what you want to do and uh, if you want to have a mixed media or a solely watercolor piece of art it uh, is all up to you but uh, you can add more and more watercolor pencil for as long as the paper takes the water. And like that, you can really add some, uh, some brightness and color and everything. Some intense shades. All right, now I got all of the barrels done. I will end the video here now. Next week I'm going to go on and uh, watercolor all of the rest that is still white. And I think uh, week three will be the color pencils. I think I'm, I will probably need another full video to have this part watercolored. I hope you enjoyed watching along. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I will see you next week for part two of the whiskey storage. Uh, if you color along, let me know. Send me a photo how far you are uh, with your piece. There's uh, all the links for connecting with me at social media or my webpage or my email are in the description box below. So you can check that out. Uh, take good care. Have fun. Have a wonderful day and rest of the week. And uh, thanks again for watching. Bye.